I feel that you have doubts. I do not hate you for those thoughts. I had them once, too. Oh my goodness! You came close very quickly, sir! Hey all you cool creatures. I'm Cryptid. Welcome to the Cryptid Plays YouTube channel. And today we are playing a fire transfixed. As you can see, this game contains mild descriptions of blood and gore. It is a self-contained tie-in to the game 1016, which you may remember is about that demon in heresy who uh, basically killed the player character and brought them to hell so this is connected to that this is a uh, kinetic novel so i don't believe it has more than one ending but it was made for the o2a2 visual novel jam of 2024 so there's only one of any asset and you know, let's get into it. Oh, yeah, it says right here <laughs> what the uh, O2A2 is. Three days ago, you celebrated the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. One of your members fell to their death from the top of the chapel, trying to whisk away the blackbirds. Today, the church in the woods burns. It chokes the forest, poisons the air with its smoke and its embers. And yet, None of the trees burn along with it. This was necessary. The only other soul outside of the church is a man you have never seen before. Dressed in black and white robes of a denomination you don't recognize. He's very pretty. <laughs> I, I love cat's art. Their characters have such a, I don't know what it is about them. They're all like kind of ethereal. Embers sit on his cheeks glowing against his scars and mismatched eyes. He must have started the blaze, and he's making sure the job gets finished. You try to muster questions and pleas, but nothing suffices. Your church was doomed. The second the fallen was killed. Killed. A purposeful death. Not an accident. The fire crackles. Seconds ago, you were in a vigil for the fallen devotee of your community. Everyone in the church loved them. So did someone else. <laughs> you were seated in the back, eyes closed, in a silent memoriam to recall memories of their life. You smelled the heavy flavor of ash and fire first and you sprinted for the door and left. Not a single soul came out behind you. As the savior, I did what was necessary. 
Your church was condemned by heresy, and it has already begun to overrun you all. You don't understand what that means. This is not the first church to be consumed, and it will certainly not be the last. For in his body, which is still covered in the scars from when the Romans burned him alive, has the same carnal desires that sent the rest of humanity into its spiral. The Savior stares deep into the heart of the fire. It came in slowly as a raven. Heresy would sit outside the windows, admiring the beauty of God's disciples. He would cry, but he would not admit it. How something so beautiful was shielded by the church. It is a sanctuary for a reason, isn't it? He laughs. There's a rattle of a cough that he effortlessly suppresses. In the distance, you can hear the groans of a crush of bodies. Did they trap themselves in the chaos, letting their bodies con letting their bodies contort to create a flesh puzzle at the door? Heresy is a man with a muzzle over his face. He claims it keeps him from being able to lie. That itself is a lie. The truth is much more complicated in life. Heresy was a poet. He was a seducer who knew the taste of 700 lips on his body. They draped him in jewels and veils and called him a prophet. To what God he masqueraded for has been lost to time, even to him. After they burned him for leading blind lambs astray, he woke up with the muzzle and the pain of a thousand deaths. He sits in the circles of hell. He has taken blasphemy under his wing, given up willingly by anger. Every day he watches the souls of sinners burn in hollow graves. He uses an umbrella to keep the ash from falling on his clothes and getting in his lungs. He desires love from an equal, he says. Truly, he desires love from something underneath him, something he can change. There is no way we can stop him. We can only clean up the disease he has left behind. Your community was in danger the day your devotee died. I need to make that clear. It is the cleansing of a disease before the infection spreads. The Savior smiles at you. One of his eyes is infected with red veins creeping towards the crimson iris. He looks sick, infected with something that only the Lord could inflict if he was still that cruel. You doubt that? And
and yet the Savior's expression hardens. You feel your thoughts being pulled out of your brain and examined, connected to strings. The groans from the church have stopped, but the structure still stands. I feel that you have doubts. I do not hate you for those thoughts. I had them once, too. Oh my goodness! You came close very quickly, sir. He touches your face, cradling it. It's so smooth. So pure. So free of the impurities of the world. But his grip is hard enough to draw blood. You wince. It dirties everything you've built in your devotion. Purity. Routine. Duty. The Savior leans in and whispers. Do you know why I leave one person alive as the fires finish their duty? Why I let the Lord deliver one to me so that at least one of you in your dying moments can hear the sins brought upon you. Why this cleansing is for the protection of all lambs. Each one is painted with their own circles to help their owners remember which flock they belong to. You are fated by the music and sound of the Lord himself to join them. He sings to me and gives me divine intuition to guide my flame. He backs away from you. What he speaks with is the tongue of a madman. He guides me to extinguish those touched by demons. We cannot truly quench evil, for evil must persist to show the lambs the price of goodness. Heresy, with his pale gloved hands, has strung them around your neck, pressing into your arteries. He will force you to spout his heresies, even if you think you're free of sin. I cannot let you go. Put yourself in my position and answer with your and answer with your and answer with yourself in mind. Will you let yourself be choked by the ash? Or will you allow your body to burn? like those you once knew. Make your choice. Oh, that's cool. This has that uh, background where you can move the uh, sprite around over it. Um, what do I want to do? I just saved, so I guess I'll get both of these. Let's burn first. You know, your choice does not matter. And so, you take a third option. You submit defeat and lie in the grass. 
the Savior nods and helps you close your eyes. The Lord will forgive me. The Lord always has and forever will. I love seeing this uh, just go straight back into it. So if I chose um to choke, it probably would be the same, but I'm just going to check real quick. All right. Choke. All right, you know your choice does not matter. So we take the third option. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I uh, guess that's it. Well then, uh, I, I guess we shall leave this here. Um, as always, I enjoy Kat's writing as well as their art. They have such interesting stories. Of course, I loved 1016, and since this ties into that, you know I'm a big fan. Um, oh, also, fun, fun little thing I intend for when I have 1016 subscribers, I am going to have the new, in quotes, version of 1016 as a celebratory video. I, I say new in quotes because it's obviously nearing a year old now, but it has voice acting and an extra ending and some other things. Maybe a couple extra endings, but regardless, I will be so excited to get that up. But <laughs> for now, for now, let's uh, leave this here. So if you liked this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more of me, but you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. I should be back to uploading three times a week by now. So, you know, and I hope to see you all next time. Bye.